Ruger SR 1911. I got this one in January of 2012 when the first batch came available. I'd been reading about the SR1911 for months and couldn't wait to get my filthy hands on one. I had this one on back order for a few weeks before it hit the stores. As soon as I got the call, I took a break from work and picked it up. This was before Skullcrest had an FFL, so I went through GT distributors and got law enforcement pricing. I don't have the receipt in front of me, but I think I got it for around $600. This was my first 1911 and it felt completely different from the Berettas and Glocks I was used to shooting. I field stripped it, cleaned it, and took it to the range right after work. I remember buying Winchester White Box FMJ for my first range session with the SR1911. I also remember being surprised at the outrageous price of even cheaper 45 ACP ammo. I think the current price of all ammo is still grossly inflated, but that's a subject for another day. This 1911 came with standard white dot sights. They seemed kind of big and spread out. I felt like there's too much air between the dots. I know big dot sights are okay for a fast target acquisition, but I think they allow too much room for air when going for precision shots. Last year, I changed these sights out for true glow sights which have fiber optic rods as well as tritium inserts. This means they glow bright in the day and night. I like the fact that they would glow so bright it looked like they were battery operated but these lights were destroying my shot placement. The windage was fine. I had to hold 6 o'clock about 5 inches from the bullseye. That's too much for me. These sights are too high. So I went with these Novak fiber optic sights. Green in the rear, red in the front. They glow bright in medium to bright daylight, but they don't do much for me when it's completely dark. They're fully adjustable and I had to set the rear sight as low as it could go to hit bullseye with a regular 6 o'clock hold. You can adjust the Novax with a small flathead screwdriver or the little tool that comes in the package. I like using the little tool, but I keep losing it. As of this recording, it's nowhere to be found. With these kick-ass sights and the big hole this gun punches, you can easily tear a fist-sized group out of your target. The SR1911 seems to have consistent accuracy even when the barrel's hot. The SR1911 comes with these grips. Nice but nothing special. Until sometime in 2016, I let this gun stock. When I decided to start putting money into it, the grips were the first thing to go. I ordered a set of G10 grips online, but the first set was way too aggressive. The G10 material was way too rough and I think it probably would have tore at my shirt if I would have carried around enough. I sent those grips back and got these less aggressive grips you see here. These are absolutely perfect. They're grippy enough to handle the gun when it's wet, in the rain, or whatever, or if you happen to get diarrhea on your hands. I feel like they compensate for the smooth front strap of the SR1911. Ruger did a nice job with the back strap checkering. I don't know why they didn't do it to the front, but I guess I shouldn't expect too much for this price point. I would say the trigger pull is standard for a 1911. When I first started shooting it, I thought it was amazing compared to the Glock 22 I was carrying at the time. Now that I've shot several 1911s, I have some sort of basis for comparison. I don't have a trigger skill because I'm not a nerd. With the exception of nothing fancy, only nerds, liberals, and has-beens have trigger skills. I just go by feel and accuracy results. There's nothing bad or particularly great to say about the SR 1911 trigger pull. It's just a 1911 trigger. If you don't have a 1911 and maybe you're an AR guy, I would say it feels something like a single stage AR trigger. The finish on the SR 1911 has an aluminum type look but it's definitely stainless steel. The matte finish is from bead blasting. You'll know this gun is steel as soon as you pick it up. It's not light by any stretch, but it's not excessively heavy. It feels solid in your hand and doesn't rattle if you try to shake it. When you're holding a fully loaded government size 1911, you know you're holding something nasty. If you want to be extra nasty, check out the Insane Ballistics on Underwood 180 grain plus P hollow points. Muzzle velocity of 1,200 feet per second and over 590 foot pounds of energy. Enough said about that. Over the past five years I've owned this gun, I've only had issues with two particular types of ammo. The first is Winchester's T-Series 230 grain. I didn't find out about the issue until I went to qualify with it. This is what my agency issues if you're carrying 45. Let me be clear, it will fire Winchester Ranger if you're using the factory Ruger magazines that it came with. I only had problems when I was using the Wilson Combat, Metgar, or Pair Ordnance magazines. I was able to quickly clear the malfunctions during qualification, but after that experience, I chose to stick with my VP9 for duty carry. So the moral of the story is, if you have a Ruger and you need to use Ranger T-Series ammo, make sure you're using the factory magazines. The SR1911 seems to fire all other types of ammo just fine regardless of what magazines I'm using. As I mentioned, Underwood 180 grain hollow point is an awesome round for the SR1911, but you may want to steer clear of the Extreme Defender round. I couldn't get it to chamber, so I never got to fire it. However, the Extreme Defender works incredibly well on my other 45 ACP pistols. I don't conceal carry my SR1911 very often, but when I do, I use one of our outside the waistband holsters. I carry my 
1911 when I know I'm going to be standing or walking for a long time or when I'm wearing a slimmer fitting t-shirt. A perfect example of when I carry the SR 1911 is at my daughter's softball games. I know I'll be standing for an hour or so and I will definitely be wearing a t-shirt. I don't want to pack anything that will print on my t-shirt or draw attention. If a bad guy shows up at a sporting event and needs to be dealt with, it probably won't be at very close distance and given the precious environment, accuracy will be of great importance. My SR 1911 has good aftermarket sights, a decent sight radius, and more than adequate firepower. The full size 1911 is a large frame pistol, but it's very low profile when carried in the 3 or 9 o'clock position with one of these holsters. The inside of the waistband is more comfortable for me while driving, but I prefer the outside of the waistband when I'm standing or walking. Regardless of the reasonable price, I think Ruger makes a good 1911. I feel it meets the needs of certain carry situations with the right ammo. It's also not a bad choice for home defense. It fires a proven self defense round that probably probably won't totally blow out your eardrums like a 12 gauge might if you're forced to fire it indoors. If you like the outside the waistband holster you see, buy one from us at Skullcrush.com.